If you've ever watched a crane before, you've probably wondered, what in the world are they doing? The funky way they run, the outrageous sounds, and the little head motions? But actually, once you get to know them, all those odd behaviors begin to make sense. Curious? Let me introduce you. As it turns out, crane behaviors tell us a lot about what a crane is thinking. For example, this crane isn't real happy we're here, so it's ruffling its feathers. As it gets more excited, it drops its wings or crouches down to threaten any intruders. Most crane species will also flash the bright red patch on top of their heads to ward off an opponent or predator. And these whooping cranes are courting each other, a dance of romance, if you will. More on that later. Here are some other fun facts. On average, cranes live to be 15 to 20 years old in the wild and can weigh up to 25 pounds. And their feathers are made of the same stuff as human fingernails. Speaking of feathers, part of the reason cranes run so funny is that they often spread their wings out to keep their balance or to gain speed. In fact, adult cranes can actually run faster than humans. Of the 15 species of cranes in the world, only two can call North America home, the sandhill crane and the whooping crane. Unfortunately, the whooping cranes are in real danger of becoming extinct, but thankfully, some people are working really hard to bring them back. And present to the Marianne crane. is an agriculturist at the International and Crane the Foundation crane in Baraboo, Wisconsin. She and others here are raising whooping cranes in such a way that they'll be able to survive on their own in the wild. So we use the costume so that the bird knows it's a bird, and we become a crane. So we're covered from head to toe, and then we feed the chick with the puppet, and we forage using the puppet. We do calls using the puppet. We'll look around, just acting as much like a, a crane as we possibly can in that costume. Well, why can't you just feed the baby cranes with your regular hand? Well, for two reasons. One is imprinting. We want the bird to know that it's a crane. When it grows up, we want it to act like a crane and interact with cranes. Um, another reason is we don't want them tame because we're releasing them for the wild, so we want them to stay away from people. And if a person's holding food and handing the food to them, that's not keeping them wild. Of course, I couldn't do this story without actually dressing up in one of those crane costumes. Well, what do you think? I feel pretty craneish. So when you act like a crane, things you can do, um, you can bend over, you want to forage, peck at the ground a little bit. For pre-flight posture, you want to put your bill up just a little bit. Like that? Yeah. And then pull out your wing just a little bit, lean forward, and then you can take off. Well, that was fun. But costumes are just one tool scientists are using to help whooping cranes. In Wisconsin, whoopers had disappeared by 1890. In 1999, a program was begun to reintroduce whooping cranes back to Wisconsin. The only problem is, cranes usually learn migration routes from their parents. But in this case, the chicks had no clue how to get from Wisconsin to where they would spend their winter in Florida. Solution? Check out these ultralight planes. As it turns out, pilots from Operation Migration are able to use the planes as parents and lead the young chicks south for the winter. Getting cranes to follow these planes takes a little work. Little by little, they are trained to follow the ultralights. Until one day... <laughs> Amazingly, this first flock of Wisconsin whooping cranes migrated back to Wisconsin all by themselves the following spring. Scientists tracked their entire journey by attaching radio and satellite devices to their legs. There are now whooping cranes migrating back and forth between Wisconsin and Florida. We're sure glad these cranes are doing so well, but there's a lot more that needs to happen before we can call this effort a success. We want their numbers to grow and we want to have more and more cranes out there. So hopefully they'll know that they're cranes and they'll do um, some courtship dances. Even if these birds do start having babies on their own, there are other dangers on their path to surviving in the wild. Kids can help out a lot by making sure that uh, they don't litter. A couple things that actually came from inside of a crane, these are things that have been removed from cranes. So washers, and you wouldn't, wouldn't believe it, but that screw was even inside of a crane. So 
basically the birds will eat anything and everything, so it's very good to make sure that you can keep trash where it should be and not having it flying around. These birds are so beautiful and so fun too. I'm sure you agree that they're worth all the effort it takes to save them. Don't go away, because we've got lots more incredible crane stuff headed your way. Portions of the preceding program were co-produced by the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources and Discover Wisconsin Productions as part of the children's television series, Into the Outdoors.